Hey team, welcome back to another lesson with Kesteva. In today's example, we're going to be going over development lengths of rebar in concrete. Now, in today's example, we will be um, going step by step through the concrete code, which is the ACI, and we're going to be using the most up to date version, um, which is ACI 318 14. And to give you a quick look at what that cover is, so this is the cover uh, of the concrete code. Uh, so it would be most beneficial if you can have this code with you side by side in order to um, walk through this example. But if you do not, I will be showing the code sections uh, and walking through the code side by side, flipping back and forth with my calculations. Um, but as always, it's, it's most beneficial to have the code with you uh, while you walk through. We're going to be going over four development categories. Number one, the development of deformed bars and deformed wire in tension. That's in section 25.4.2, which corresponds to page 415 of the code. Second is development of standard hooks in tension. That's in section 25.4.3. That corresponds to page 417. Third, development of headed deformed bars in tension, section 25.4.4 page 419, and lastly, development of deformed bars and deformed wire in compression. That's in section 25.4.9, which corresponds to page 427. Now, for all cases, we're going to be assuming uh, F prime C, 4,000 PSI, pretty standard concrete. Uh, for our reinforcing bar, we're going to be assuming an FY of 60,000 PSI, again, pretty standard for reinforcing. We're going to be using normal weight concrete with a density of 150 pounds per cubic foot. And for all reinforcing, we are going to be using uncoated bars today. For section, or for example number one, development of deformed bars and deformed wire in tension, we have the following example. So we have a five inch thick slab, and what we have is this roughened surface right here, and that's the end of a pore. Um, say it's for a big uh, factory slab, so that can't all be poured in one go. Uh, most of the time, the contractor is going to want to pour that in multiple sections, and that means you're going to have pour stops um, like we have here. So in order to continue that reinforcing, what they've done is they've extended that rebar um, out past the pour line, past, usually it sticks through the formwork, and then when they strip the forms off, you have this edge of slab and with this reinforcing sticking out of it. Um, what needs to happen next is you need to lap on additional reinforcing um, to then continue that reinforcing through onto the next portion of slab. Um, and we need to make sure that that joint, that lap is not weaker than the reinforcing of the bar itself. What scientists have done is they, they've run crazy amounts of tests to figure out what that um, development length is that make sure that you don't have a uh, loss of capacity through that lap section. And then they broke it down into equations and tables in the ACI for us to use, um, which you'll see here in a second. So we're assuming number five bars at 12 inches on center. Let's get it started. So as I said earlier, let's jump over to section 25.4.2. Okay, so here we are, chapter 25, section 25.4. Now, I have it circled here. This is actually the beginning of the section that goes over all of these development categories. And I just want to point out a couple of key notes that the code provides for you. So three things here. So hooks and heads shall not be used to develop bars in compression. That's because it's, it's basically a waste of uh, steel because any, any bars in any reinforcing steel in concrete um, its main purpose is to provide uh, tensile capacity in our members or in our in our structures, whereas the concrete is doing the vast majority of the compressive, um, handling the compressive stresses. So by developing, by adding hooks and headed studs for compression connections, um, it doesn't it doesn't provide you any additional capacity. So therefore, it's just a waste. So they say no need to do that. The second is that development lengths do not require a strength reduction factor. So we should always be designing concrete in the LRFD design um, per my previous videos. 
there's no need to be slapping on some sort of fee factor. And then lastly, the values of square root f prime c used to develop um, lengths shall not exceed 100 psi, which that means you can't use concrete mixes that have uh, f prime c of 10,000 psi uh, or greater. That, that just can't be used for these equations, and those are some ridiculously high concrete mixes. But in today's example, we're using 4,000 psi, so we're well within that criteria. So here we are in our first section, and if you look below, development length, noted as L sub D, can be found uh, using two different criteria, A and B. So L, uh, A is the length calculated in accordance with the equation in tables below, or B is just a straight up 12 inches. The equations are found in this table, 25.422. And we know that we have a number five bar. So first it's broken up into size of bars here. So we have a number five, which is less than a number six. So we know we're in this category. And then spacings and covers. So you have this long bit here, and then you have other cases. So for the long bit, we actually fall into that. So it says clear spacing of bars or wires being developed or lapped, spliced, not less than uh, the diameter of the bar. Clear cover at least diameter bar and stirrups or ties throughout um, your development length, not less than the code minimum. Or clear spacing of bars or wires being developed or lap spliced at least two diameter bar and clear cover at least diameter of bar. Now in our case, we have two bars that are gonna be lapped together, which means that the two bars are gonna be in contact with one another and then tied together. Um, so while that does actually fall outside the criteria of not less than diameter of bar, um, that's talking about cases where if they were not in contact with one another, then you'd want to make sure that the two lapped pieces of steel are at least a diameter bar apart, and that way the aggregate of the concrete mix can fit between those bars and you can get proper, proper cohesion of the concrete and setting up of the concrete. Um, if the bars are not in contact with one another and they're less than, but they're still spaced less than the diameter of the bar, then you're gonna get voids between your, your lap splice. So that's why they, they have this kind of confusing criteria here. But for us today, we're assuming that our steel is in contact with one another. Um, so we fall into this criteria. Now, that means we're going to be falling under this equation. So now we'll be jumping back to our calculations. So we have our two options. We have A, which was the equation that we noted in ACI. We've written it out here. And we have B of just 12 inches. And we need to know the greater of the two options is what we need to use for our lap. Now we have some factors within our top equation. You have psi sub t, you have psi sub e, and you have lambda. Let's jump back over to the code. Now, in order to find these, you actually jump over to page 417, and you can see you jumped to uh, table 25.424. These are modification factors for development lengths um, for deformed bars in tension. And for our standard, I don't know if anyone's not following along with this, but for standard reinforcing, that's also referred to as deformed bars. So it gives you everything right here. So we are not using lightweight concrete. So the lambda refers to what type of concrete you're using. Um, we are using normal weight concrete. So we have 1.0. Um, psi sub E is what type of coating is on your bar. So for that, we are uncoated. So 1.0. And then uh, that is it. Just those two factors, really straightforward. Let's jump back to the calculations. So we have everything we need. Let's plug in. After we have everything plugged in, uh, you'll see that that comes out to a development length LD of 24 inches, which is greater than option B of 12 inches. So we know our development length needs to be 24 inches at a minimum to fully develop our number five bar. Now, quick little section here or little note here for you guys. Always remember you need to multiply by the diameter of your bar 
right up here in the equation. That can be forgotten a lot when you're first starting out with this equation. And if you don't have a cheat sheet of diameter of bars, you can actually go into the ACI uh, on page 507 that lists out all of the diameter of bars. So ACI 318-14, page 507. Really handy. Number two. Okay, so number two is on page 417, same place as where uh, the previous table we were just using. If you scroll down just a bit, you see section 25.4.3, and you have the following. So for development length of hooks, that's denoted as LDH, seen right here. And you have three options, A, B, and C. A is an equation uh, similar to previous. B is 8 times diameter of bar, and C is just straight up 6 inches. So that looks like this. Okay, so we have a couple factors that we need to find, but we can solve, C is already solved for, it's 6 inches, done, boom. Um, B, we can do very quickly because we know the diameter of our bar is 0 0.625 inches. So that is just that equation which gets us five inches, done. Now we just need to solve for A. So we need psi E, psi C, psi R, lambda. Let's jump back to the ACI. So now we move forward onto page 418, and you'll see there's another table of modification factors for development of hooked bars and tension. So all these tables look identical. So you gotta make sure that you read the title here. So in our case, hooked bars and tension because they're different for every section that we do here. Well, pretty similar. Lambda, normal weight concrete, it's 1.0. Epoxy, we have no epoxy, 1.0. Cover, now cover you'll notice um, for number 11 bars, and smaller hooks with side cover, normal to the plane of the hook, greater than two and a half inches, and for 90 degree hooks with cover on bar extension beyond the hook, greater than two inches, greater than or equal to two inches. Well, if we go back, I haven't written it out yet, but probably would be most beneficial for you guys. If you had this type of scenario happening, which we do in our example, say you have a beam framing into a column, and you have a joint along that column, and you have a piece of rebar coming in, and you're developing it with a standard hook. Your LDH is that distance there. Now, what they're saying is, for this distance, beyond the hook, let's call that a clear cover of one and a half inches. So if we scoot back to the ACI and reread, so we have a 90 degree hook with a cover on bar extension beyond the hook, greater or equal to two inches. Well, we have one and a half inches, so we do not fit into this criteria, so we are other, so we are 1.0. And lastly, we have our confining reinforcement uh, modification factor. So if we look here, we have for 90 degree hooks of number 11s and smaller bars, so that's us. If we have enclosed along LDH within ties um, or stirrups, yada, 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 or option two, enclosed along the bar extension or for 180 degree hooks below. Okay, so we don't have 180 degrees, so we're only in this area. But what this breaks down to is actually, we give you some um, diagram uh, or some figures here as examples, so we don't have any type of um, confinement reinforcing around that hook. So for us, we're again just going to be other, which is 1.0. So that would be everything for us. Let's hop back. So now that we're back, we know that all of our factors are 1.0. If we plug all those in, we get the following equation. And once we solve for everything, we get 11.9 inches. So we'll just round that up to 12 inches. Okay, that gives us all three options. Now, again, we need to cho choose the greatest of the three options, which again falls down to the 12 inches. So we know that 12 inches is a required development length for our hooked bar. Case number three, development of headed deformed bars in tension. Now in this example, 
Uh, I've started by giving you the figure, so it, hopefully it's a little easier to follow along. Apologies on um, example number two. But for this one, you have the same scenario. You have a concrete beam um, forming into a concrete column. And instead of using a hooked bar, you are actually using a, um, uh, a terminator or a, a headed stud at the end of your rebar. Um, and that is denoted uh, the development length of that type of um, fastener or embed is uh, denoted as LDT. And that we need to make sure or be careful of is from the inside face of the headed stud. So it's not from the outside of the headed stud, but from the inside, because what happens is um, you actually have this type of action happening, which is actually your breakout of your concrete but we won't be getting into that today. But So you want to be taking your development length from the inside of your head. Okay, let's jump back into the code to section 25.4.4. So here we are on page 419. If you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see section 25.4.4, development of headed deformed bars in tension. Now, if we scroll down one page, that will bring us to our requirements. So in order to find LDT, you have three different scenarios. You have option A, which again is a similar equation. You have option B, which is eight times diameter bar, and you have C, which is just flat six inches. So one, two, three. And you need to take the greatest uh, of A through C, as denoted right there. So let's jump back to our calculations. Okay, we have our three options written, and we have just one unknown in our equation, which is C sub E. Now we can still, C is already, that's solved, just straight up six inches. B, we know from previous, which is just eight times our diameter of bar, which comes out to five inches. So let's find our unknown back in the code. So you notice this is different. We're not gonna be going to a table this time. It actually says, with C sub E, given in this section. So let's jump over. Here we are at the section the code talked about. Now, it does say um, in text here, modification factor C sub E in 25.442A shall be 1.2 for epoxy coated or zinc and epoxy dual coated bars and 1.0 for uncoated. Again, we are uncoated in this case, so we're just 1.0. Okay, we have everything solved for. Let's plug in for equation A and see what we have. With everything plugged in, we get 9.5 inches, which we will round up to 10 inches. 10 inches is the greatest of the three options, so 10 inches is your development length for your terminator head. Done. Last one, number four. Now, number four is, uh, actually I should say, the previous three were tension connections, and now for option number four, you have development of deformed bars and deformed wires in compression. So for this problem, we're going to have the following. We're going to have a, a column scenario here where they've cast the column to a certain height. You have the rebar sticking out, and then now they're lapping on additional column reinforcing and then going to cast an upper portion of, uh, of the column. So your uh, development length of that, that compressive reinforcing is denoted by LDC. So let's see our requirements and jump over to the ACI. Okay, here we are on page 427, section 25.4.9, development of deformed bars and deformed wires and compression. So if we jump down, we see that development length, LDC, of deformed bars is um, based on two separate equations or two options. You have option A, which is length calculated in accordance with the below equation which is right here, or option B, which is just straight up eight inches. Then, to take it one step further, option A is then split up into two different equations you have to check. You have A and you have B. So let's jump back and get both of those. Okay, so we have the following. Well, option B is just eight inches, That's solved for. Um, the two equations, we do need C sub R. So let's jump back to the code to grab that unknown and then we'll plug in. Now, C sub R can be found in table 25.4.9.3, and, oh, and actually, um, we're gonna need lambda as well for both equations, but again, 1.0 for both, it's easy. 
Now, uh, C sub R is confining reinforcement. And now for this case, you have all these options or you have other. For our option, I did say we're, uh, we have a column as our example for this. And so that means um, if you were to be designing a column and detailing it, you would need to follow the remainder of the ACI criteria for column reinforcing. And that means that you would need to adhere to either using a spiral um, or reinforcing enclosed with one of the four options, a spiral, um, circular continuous wound tie, uh, number four wire ties in accordance with ACI, blah, 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 um, hoops in accordance. So all of these are some sort of requirement for column reinforcing to the, to, for the most part. So we are going to be falling into this criteria today, which means that we're actually using 0 0.75 because you would never have a column without stirrups or ties. It's just there. That's not permitted per the ACI. So, okay, let's jump back. We have our unknown. Okay. We have our unknowns. Let's plug in for both equations. We have both equations. And when we solve, we get 8.9 inches, which we can round up to nine inches. We get 8.4 inches, which again, will round up to nine inches. So relatively they're the same. Both you'd be using nine inches um, because they are both greater than option B, which is eight inches. So we know our development length for our compressive reinforcing is nine inches LDC. And notice that it's, it's significantly smaller um, or less of a development lap length than any of the other options. This is because, again, I, I spoke a little bit about it before, but this is a compressive um, connection where your steel is not really the controlling uh, element to transfer compressive forces. Um, it's really the concrete doing the brunt of the work for compressive, compressive loads uh, and, and stress transfer. The, the steel is there primarily in all cases of reinforced concrete for, the, um, for its tensile properties and application. So that's why it, it's really not critical that you get a large uh, lap or full development of the bar for uh, a compressive connection. And that's it for today's example. Please like and subscribe as always. Um, you know, you can hit the little bell for notifications if you'd like. Uh, I'm doing weekly videos now. I'm hoping, you know, in all honesty, I'm hoping to knock out more videos than that. But you'll definitely be seeing one per week for me. I'll be uploading on Sundays. Um, tell a friend, you know, tell a classmate, tell a fellow coworker, or anyone, again, who's just interested in, in structural engineering or engineering principles and problems and how the world kind of functions and works, the physical world, that is. I'd like to be the one that helps explain it to them. And yeah, let's grow this team together and continue to spread engineering awareness and hopefully inspire some of the future generation. So as always, uh, Ms. Kestova, I'll see you guys later. Bye.